I've officially had the Chase Sapphire preferred for a little bit over a year now, so I think it's time to take a really hard look at this card and see whether or not it's worth it for me to keep this card or cancel it in 2023. Now, this video isn't going to be a review in the sense that I'm going to break down every little minute detail about this card, but I'd rather just be a place for me to get to talk from my heart about whether or not I actually got value from this card and whether or not it should be one that you consider in your setup. Not only is this a great time to talk about this card because I did just pass that year mark of having it, but it's also a great time because as of a few days ago, it was revealed that on March 19th, you'd be able to apply for this card and get a 90,000 point welcome bonus as long as you apply for this card inside a Chase branch. However, there is more than meets the eye with that sign up bonus. So make sure you do a little bit of research on that sign up bonus, which I will leave a link for to Doctor of Credit's website down below so you can learn a little bit more about it. With that being said, though, it's time to do a deep dive on the Chase Sapphire Preferred to see how much value it gave me in this first year of me holding it, as well as how much value I can expect to get from it in the years coming. Now, there are three main ways that you can either earn Chase Ultimate Rewards points or some cash back from this card, those being the welcome bonus that comes on it, all of the credits that come on the card, as well as the amount of rewards you get from just putting spend on this card. So in that order, let's go ahead and kick it off with the welcome bonus. Now I opened this card on January 13th of 2022. And whenever I signed up for the card, there was only a 60,000 point welcome offer available. Now that offer was for 60,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points after spending $4,000 in the first three months of having it. But I've seen many people, including some of my friends, get either 80 or 100,000 point welcome offers, which I'm pretty jealous of. But honestly, this was before I even started my YouTube channel that I got this card and 60,000 points is still 60,000 points. So I'm not really complaining about it. Now, while we're talking about welcome bonuses, one important thing to note about Chase's cards, specifically the Chase Sapphire branded cards, is that on these Sapphire cards, either the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, for one, you can only ever be holding one Chase Sapphire card at once, and you can only get one welcome bonus on either of those cards every 48 months. So technically, I started that 48 month clock back in January of 2022, meaning I can get the welcome bonus on this card or the Chase Sapphire Reserve again in January of 2026. And that only goes for the Sapphire branded cards with Chase. If you have one of the Freedom cards like the Chase Freedom Unlimited or Chase Freedom Flex, you can get a bonus on each of those cards every 24 months. But enough about my sad welcome bonus I got on this card. Let's go ahead and switch gears and talk about all of the credits that come on the Chase Sapphire Preferred and how much value I personally got for them in the first year of holding this card. Now, the one credit that this card does kind of pride itself on is that it does give you a $50 annual credit whenever you book a hotel through Chase's travel portal. Now, this is going to be pretty tough to say, but actually in my first year of having this card, I didn't even use this credit, which is the one credit that everybody probably should be using on this card. The reason I didn't use it personally is because the whole first year of me having this card, I've basically just been stockpiling Chase points. And the one redemption that I did do was whenever I transferred out to travel partners rather than booking through Chase's travel portal. So for me, it just didn't get used this year, but I hope to be able to use that more in the future because I now have it on my mind at least. This card also recently added some new Instacart benefits, including a $15 per quarter statement credit whenever you make Instacart purchases on top of a six month Instacart Plus membership if you're somebody that already uses this service. Personally, I've never used Instacart and I don't plan on using it. So again, I'm getting $0 worth of value from that in the first year of having this card and expect to get $0 going forward. Aside from the two monetary credits that come on this card from Instacart, as well as from the annual hotel credit, this card also gives you a complimentary Dash Pass membership, which I personally haven't even used yet, considering I have the Amex Gold card that I use for Grubhub and Uber Eats. So tossing in another food delivery service would be a little bit much for me to handle, but technically I probably should take advantage of this credit, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And also in the first year of having this card, I did use the GoPuff credit that came on the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I'm not sure if it still comes with it, to be honest with you, because I can't find it on their website. But what it at least used to be was that Chase did partner with GoPuff. So any one of your eligible Chase cards could be used to get $10 per month in a statement credit back whenever you use their services. So I went back and did the math and found that I actually got $50 worth of value from those GoPuff credits in the first year of having this card, which is a nice added bonus, I guess. So the grand total I got back from all these different credits and benefits that come on this card is going to be the $50 I got back from GoPuff. And that's really it. So as you all likely know, and something I probably should have said by now, the Chase Sapphire Preferred does have a $95 annual fee. So with the credits alone, you kind of hope that you are going to already be getting positive value from the annual fees on these cards. But as you can see, I only got about half of the value from the credits that come with it. But luckily, that's not the only way again that we earn points from this card. We've already talked about the welcome bonus, which is how we always get the bulk of our points from our cards, at least in the first year. But after that first year, the welcome bonus doesn't necessarily help you as much and can't really be taken into consideration when you're calculating your effective annual fee every single year. But on top of the welcome bonus and the credits that we get back on this card, we're also going to be getting rewarded for all the spend we put on it. So let's talk about how much I actually earned from the spend in the first year of having this card. Just for reference, so y'all don't have to look it up, this card is going to give you 5X back on all travel booked through Chase's Ultimate Rewards Portal, 3X back on dining, 3X back on online grocery store purchases, 3X back on streaming services, 2X back on other travel purchases, and 1X on everything else. So in total, in the year of 2022, I put $6,494.13 on this card. In the first couple of months of 2023 here, I've only put $120 
$20.94 on this card. And with that amount of spend, I've accumulated 8,333 Chase Ultimate Rewards points for doing so. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but that is not a lot of spend on this card and also not a lot of points that I've earned, but let's keep going through this so you can see where the true value lies in this card. But first we need to understand how much these Chase Ultimate Rewards points are actually worth. In cashback form, Chase's Ultimate Rewards points are only worth one cent per point, meaning that I earned $83.33 back from this card in cashback form. But luckily the Chase Sapphire Preferred does come with the benefit of giving you a 25% boost on all of your points whenever you book travel through Chase's Ultimate Rewards portal. So with that 25% boost, the total value I get from those points in the travel portal is going to be $104.16. But the even bigger thing that the Chase Sapphire Preferred gives you is the ability to transfer all of your Chase points out to travel partners. And in doing so, you can conservatively estimate that you'll get about two cents per point in value from doing so. So those 8,333 points would be worth $166.66. So as we can see here, this card obviously isn't a card that I'm using for all of my purchases and isn't going to be earning a ton of points back from all of my spend. But the beauty of Chase's ecosystem that we haven't talked about yet is that you can transfer points from all of your other Chase Ultimate Rewards point earning cards onto your Chase Sapphire Preferred. And then you can implement the ability to transfer those points out to travel partners to effectively double the value of all of your Chase points that you have. But if you're someone like me that not only has a bunch of Chase cards, but also a lot of other credit cards as well, it can be pretty hard to keep up with all of those. So personally, the way that I track all of my credit card information is going to be through Max Rewards. For those of y'all that don't know about Max Rewards by now, basically what it is is an app that allows you to accumulate all of your credit card information onto one convenient app. So that means you can see all of your total card balances, point balances, and much more all in one app, even if all of the cards come from different lenders. One of my favorite features about Max Rewards is that it does tell me what card I should be using at my exact location, or it also allows me to search for what location I'll be going to in the near future to see what card I should bring with me. On top of that, they also add welcome bonus trackers to all of your new cards, which most lenders apps don't actually do for you. So that's been really helpful for me to be able to plan out when I'm going to be getting my next credit card after I hit the welcome bonus on my current credit card. And Max Rewards also has a paid tier called Max Rewards Gold, where they will automatically activate all of your credit card offers for you. So you never have to go into each one of your lenders apps and click on every one of those plus icons to add these offers to your cards. It's going to automatically do that for you. And you might even start earning rewards back on purchases you'd be making anyways, and just not know you had an offer for. This is just the beginning of what this app can do. But if you do want to try out the free features, be sure to use my link down below to sign up for it and use the code Spencer if you do want to get a free month of Max Rewards Gold that you can use in the future if you don't want to use it right away. Thank you to Max Rewards for sponsoring this video, but let's get back to this Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now that we know we can pool all of our Chase points from our other Chase cards onto the Chase Sapphire Preferred and transfer out to travel partners, let's try to understand why that's such a big deal. And honestly, if you take away anything from this video here today, I want you to take this away right here. The fact of the matter is you really don't have to put any spend on this card every single year to get massive amounts of value from it. And the way we're going to do that is by taking all of our Chase points and transfer them out to travel partners to get effectively double the value than we would have been able to before without the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So as always, let me talk about my personal journey so you can see how I get so much value from this card. When I started my credit card journey, I got started with the Chase Freedom Student, which at the time I think had about a $50 welcome offer or 5,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And then after that, eventually I added the Chase Freedom Unlimited, which I got 20,000 Ultimate Rewards points for on top of a 5% back on gas for the first year of having the card. And then at the very end of 2022, I added the Chase Inc. Cash to my setup and got 90,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points for doing so. Not to mention I added the Chase Sapphire Preferred back in January of 2022, which I again got 60,000 points for signing up for. So rather than using all of those points I got from the welcome bonuses in cashback form or through Chase's travel portal, where I'd only be getting one cent per point for doing so, I pulled all of those points onto my Chase Sapphire Preferred because I knew in the future I'd want to be booking trips with my points and I'd get about double the value for doing so with this card. And before you ask, yes, you actually can transfer all of the points you've earned on your business credit cards with Chase too, besides the Chase Inc. Premier onto your personal credit cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So that's one of the little methods that a lot of us use in the credit card game to accumulate a lot of Chase points fast and then move them to our personal cards where we can get the most value. So now after hitting all of those welcome bonuses, I have roughly 200,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points that I can get about two cents per point in value from if I transfer them out to travel partners. So this is really where we make the Chase Sapphire Preferred super valuable. But rather than me just pulling this two cent per point number out of thin air, let me give you a concrete example of a redemption I did recently at a Hyatt located near me. About a month or so ago, my girlfriend and I booked a trip at the Hyatt Lost Pines Resort here outside of Austin for a little Valentine's Day weekend. And we only plan on staying there for two nights. But of course, knowing me, I did not want to actually book this trip in cash since I had so many points lying around. So what I was able to do was transfer over 37,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points to Hyatt in order to book this trip. So if we went over to their website right now and tried to book the same exact room for the same exact amount of days on the same days of the week, you can see that we'd be paying about $583 per night in cash, or we could pay 23,000 Hyatt points per night. And even though those are Hyatt points, we can take our Chase 
ultimate rewards points and transfer those over to Hyatt and basically convert them at a one to one ratio. And the cash value of those 23,000 points would be $230 at a one cent per point valuation. So if we take $230 and divide that by $583 that this room would cost us in cash, we're getting a little bit over a 2.5 cents per point valuation for booking this trip for these two nights. So now let's go back in time and apply that 2.5 cent per point valuation to the booking that I did about a month ago. The cash price for that room for two nights would have been $935, but I actually just used 37,000 points. Once again, the cash value of those points at one cent per point would have been $370. So by transferring my Chase points over to Hyatt and making that booking with points instead of cash, I saved myself about $565. Now, yes, of course, I know some people are gonna be spamming the comments saying stuff like, well, what about the resort fees and the parking and the food and all of that stuff? But at the end of the day, those additional fees are going to be tacked on no matter how I book this trip. So that's really a null point in this conversation. If I only had my Chase Freedom Unlimited or my Chase Freedom card and I tried to do the same exact booking, I probably would have had to cash out all of my points at a one cent per point valuation. And I would have had to use 56,500 more points to book this trip rather than just using my Chase Sapphire Preferred with a small $95 annual fee to book it. Now, this is just one example of a domestic trip that I booked literally like an hour away from my house. But if I was to use all of my Chase points for international business class or first class trips instead, these numbers could get a lot crazier and I'd technically be saving a lot more money on those trips by using my points. So now let's take that same logic and apply it to all of my 200,000 ish Chase points that I have by getting the signup bonuses on all of these cards. At a 2.5 cent per point valuation of my Chase points, those 200,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points are worth about $5,000. Now to reiterate my point even further, that's an additional $3,000 worth of value I'm getting from my Chase Ultimate Rewards points by using my Chase Sapphire Preferred to transfer all of those points out to travel partners and book that way. And that's a lot of numbers I just threw at you, but let's go ahead and talk about a few more because this is arguably the most important section of this video where I talk about the total monetary value I got from this card in year one and what I can expect to get going forward in years two, three and beyond. Now, as we know, year one is going to provide you with the most amount of value from a credit card because that is when you hit the sign up bonus on the card. So in my first year of holding it, I earned a total of 68,333 Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And since 60,000 of those points came from the welcome bonus, that's about 88% of all the points I earned on this card in that first year was from that welcome bonus. If I redeemed in cash back form at one cent per point, I'm getting $683.33. At a 1.25 cent per point valuation when booking travel through Chase's Ultimate Rewards portal when using the Chase Sapphire Preferred, that's a total value of $854.16. And once again, with travel partners, let's give a conservative estimate of about two cents per point you'd be getting when transferring those out. That's a total value of $1,366.66 that I got in year one of having this card. Now we can go ahead and tack on an extra $50 onto each of those categories, considering I got $50 back from the GoPuff credits. So those totals will be on screen now. But at that highest redemption rate of two cents per point with travel partners we're talking about here today, my total value would be $1,416.66. But now talking about every year after that, I'm obviously not going to be getting a welcome bonus on this card until year four, which is 2026 for me. And I honestly don't expect to get any value from any of the credits, except for hopefully the annual hotel credit, as long as I remember to use that. So let's add $50 onto the total for that. And if I put the same amount of spend on this card that I did in the first year, not counting the welcome bonus spend, which was, you know, an added $4,000 to hit that, I'd probably only be getting like 5,000 points a year just from spending on this card, which is obviously not much at all. So with that $50 annual hotel credit and those 5,000 points that I earn a year from spending on it, I can be expecting to get either $100 worth of cash back, $125 through Chase's travel portal, or $200 when transferring out to travel partners. So technically, no matter what, I'm still going to get positive value from this card every year with just that very limited amount of spend I put on it. But is that really worth keeping this card open with that $95 annual fee? To answer that question, we just can't forget about the fact that I get the majority of the value from this card by transferring all of my Chase points onto this card and then transferring those out to travel partners. That is where you're going to get the most amount of value from this card in your wallet. As you can tell from that example I gave earlier, even by just booking one two night stay about an hour away from my house, I was able to save myself $565 by doing so. And if you add that to the effective annual fee, then you're definitely coming out with positive value every year because of that. But just imagine if you started booking more trips using your Chase Ultimate Rewards points through this card, or you just booked one really nice trip for a few days, you could be earning thousands of dollars effectively from this card every single year by using it as just a pass through entity for all of your Chase Ultimate Rewards points. So this all begs the question for me, is this going to be a card that I keep? Bottom line is that the effective value I get from this card by using it to transfer out to travel partners is just way too high for me to ever consider canceling this card while I have a ton of Chase points. But outside of just that redemption value, it has actually saved me in a couple situations that I didn't really expect it to, I guess. Starting with the fact that this card also comes with no foreign transaction fees and it's a Visa credit card. And the reason that's a big deal for me is because throughout the whole first year of me having this card, the only other card I had that had no foreign transaction fees was the Amex Gold card.
before. Now, outside of the US, Amex is just not very well accepted. And I actually ran into an issue with this whenever I was on a trip with my girlfriend in Mexico, because outside of our hotel, all the local vendors and places like that just would not accept Amex credit cards. However, they did accept Visa credit cards. So my Chase Sapphire Preferred came in clutch there and actually gave us the ability to parasail on the coast, which was pretty cool. And while yes, I could have done that with one of my other credit cards too, it was just nice to not have to pay that 3% foreign transaction fee or whatever it is with the other cards. Now, this is all great for me, but who would I actually say that this card is for outside of myself? As you can probably tell by now, I really think that this card is for anybody that either earns a ton of Chase Ultimate Rewards points or just has a stockpile of them that they haven't used yet and want to get rid of. The fact alone that you can just add this card to your setup and practically double the value of all of your Chase Ultimate Rewards points or more than double them in certain cases, that just makes this card a no brainer for anybody that's even just slightly a Chase fanboy. Honestly, even if you're just somebody that signs up for Chase's cards for the welcome bonuses and sock drawers them after that, this card can still be super valuable for you because your welcome bonuses just got double the value if you add this one. And just make sure that if you do want to apply for this card now after watching this video, that you go ahead and check with your local Chase branch to see if they're giving you that 90,000 point welcome offer. But if you're watching this at a later date or you just don't have that offer available, be sure to check the links down in my description where I always have the highest public welcome offers available, at least online. If you want to hear more about the value that I get from all of my credit cards rather than just the Chase Sapphire Preferred, then be sure to watch this video next because I really think you'll enjoy it. With that being said, Odin and I both want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to sign up for Max Rewards, be sure to use my link to help support the channel. And as always, we'll catch you guys next time.